Good morning folks, welcome to the vlog. We're in today uh, with a very laid out and determined plan. So we're obviously opening up the kitchen in the brew shed and we need some type of restaurant seating area so it actually fits in. So I've been using a program called SketchUp 2017, free to download at the moment. Uh, and what I've done is modelled what I think the restaurant, the whole pub's on there actually, including the kitchen, but I've modelled what I think the restaurant should look like and uh, in that corner we've got all that red seating. It's not necessarily going to be red, but it gives me a good idea of what we can fit in there, how many people we can seat. So today we're going to start to kind of uh, concept out a little bit of that seating and um, there's going to be a lot of plywood cuts involved in this build. We need to make about 12 of those benches. So in order to get a little bit of repeatability and not have to struggle with a full sheet on the table saw here, which is always very tricky, I've decided today we're going to build a track saw rail for the circular saws that I've got and then um, hopefully we'll have time after that to kind of get on with starting to prove the concept of these first benches. So uh, yeah, stick with us on this one. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to lead. So I would like to have the ability to put these eight foot sheets of ply. So that means that essentially we're gonna need a track saw that is at least eight foot, ideally nine or 10 feet, because obviously we could then have a little bit of an overhang to make sure that we get a straight cut, but we don't have a 10 foot sheet of MDF. I'm going to use MDF because it's pretty stable if it's kept dry, whereas if I use proper solid wood then there's a chance that it might move a little bit on me. And if I use plywood, if I don't get those edges absolutely perfect then there's also a chance of some splintering or maybe some snagging down further down the line. So we've got an 8 foot long by whatever I've chopped off the end, off cut of MDF here and I'm going to offer up my uh, circular saw and then we're going to build, we're going to cut a strip off with the table saw and then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to manufacture an edge strip and a base plate for the uh, circular saw to sit into. We'll put something like a 25 degree mitre on both pieces so they match and kind of interlock so uh, we don't get any twisting of the saw as we're running it down the workpiece. Then we'll stick that edge strip onto this 18 mil. We'll run a test cut and then we should have, <laughs> we should have a, a relatively rudimental track saw to allow us to cut full sheets of uh, plywood, MDF and whatever else we bring into the workshop, sheet goods, uh, without kind of wandering off track and I'm thinking as well we'll make the base plate a little bit longer than the actual saw itself then that will give us um, the compensation for having only an eight foot guide but if we come off the end of the workpiece and we've still got a foot of uh, foot plate in the guide that should keep us nice and square when we start the cuts and finish the cuts that's the plan whether it works like that or not is always a bit of a punt for us here on the channel but uh, yeah let's get stuck into it so let's have a look at the 6mm MDF that I'm going to be making the top edge the top guide out of and here is that offending article it looks like both these sheets are exactly the same size which kind of tells me that I must have used them for the same project. So on the base here we've got the 18mm MDF which we're going to use nice solid platform for the track saw and then on top of that we'll glue on this 6mm stuff and that should provide us a nice mitre so one's kind of that way and on the track saw you've got that, that side 
and when they slot together to prevent any sort of uh, horizontal or vertical should I say vertical movement and keep the cut at 90 so yeah let's get the saw out and measure up so we've got two different circular saws here and they are very different beasts indeed so this one I've had for probably 10 to 15 years as you can see it's got a rusty old blade on it it's done some miles it's probably been around the world once or twice but this blade is still sharp it is actually razor sharp and uh, it's lightweight very easy to use might just need a little bit of maintenance before we repurpose it for this job and over here we've got the Erbauer saw which we bought from either Screwfix or Tool Station a couple of years ago when we started to make the uh, bar for the new brew shed so I had some big slabs of ash to cut through and they were 60 mil deep and this blade had the uh, had the depth on it to get through it but there's a little bit little bit of slop in this blade and uh, it's a very rough sounding saw and quite frankly it weighs about as much as one of my legs so I don't really want to be slinging that around cutting sheets of MDF I want something light quick easy to use so I can do all the cutting of the big sheets quickly out there in the in the in the brewery area and then we can come in here and do the finer cuts on the table saw without having to sling heavy sheets of uh, material around so I think even though this is probably a better saw and it may have more life in it because it's newer I'm gonna go along with the challenge saw I think Argos used to sell these many a year ago so the slop in the blade there's a little bit of back and forth slop but that's just on the um, the magnets in the motor because it's direct drive it's not a worm drive or anything like that but up and down there's basically no movement whatsoever the only thing I don't like with this saw is occasionally the guide sticks you see that so might just need a little bit of lube in there just to sort it out but I'm sure we can resolve that so there we go in fact I'll probably give that a bit of maintenance before we carry on with this video and uh, conveniently it's already got some holes cut out in the base plate so we can screw that directly to our six millimeter MDF guide so yes we've taken the saw to pieces completely and as you can see that is basically the action end there we go so in there we've got excuse Gemma in the background she's casking today we've got uh, this is the drive of course and it just comes straight through with almost a grinder style mounting plate and then um, on this section the base plate sits into the housing here um, with that sitting there like such this section hooks over a little uh, retaining pin just on the end there and that allows for uh, when we raise or lower the base plate there is a little uh, arm here which tries to bring down the riving knife I think it's called at the back in the same instance so it covers more of the guide more of the blade should I say when it's exposed up here at the back you see how it comes round and of course you need the riving knife a little bit less when you're doing lower cuts so it pulls it out of the way retracts it somewhat and over the years of me using it this was all seized up so thankfully taking it apart seems to have had the added bonus of cleaning it up for us so let's get the right 
screw in here. There we go. So that goes in there like that. And then on the other side, don't matter if that's popped out for a second, we can get it back in. On the other side, we have this long orange stick and that just locks the guide into position when we choose to set a depth on there. So if I tighten that up now, everything will be back in place. And the reason it's flapping around like a cock in the breeze is because this end here is actually retained by this magnesium face plate so that doesn't come out um, when you're rotating it and that's retained by these three screws. So yeah, I'm glad I took it apart. It's enabled me to figure out how indeed it works, but also um, it's allowed me to clean out any gubbins and whatnot that's in there. And now moving forward, I'm, I'm not gonna oil this by the way, because I think if you put oil on anything like this, you're asking for trouble. So all that's gonna happen is the oil will catch in the uh, in the sawdust and create a whole lot more mesh than you started with. So if I just get this little springy roo back on this corner, come on, spring us in the dingus end. She's a noisy bugger, isn't she? That Gemma, can you hear her banging around? And then the springus in the dingus just there. Come on, lad. Put some hair around it. There we go. And then once that is engaged in there, which it will be any moment now. Oh God, I'm, I'm struggling a little. I'm struggling a wee bit, lad. And then we need to put this on top and that retains that plate in there with those screws these three no nope, these three and they retain our guard anyway I'm fiddling around with screwdrivers and screws here and uh, yeah slightly distracted so We'll turn the Camerooner off and uh, we'll come back when uh, I've got it all together. I think, in fact, I think that's, that's about nailed it up. There we go, just one more screw. And that should allow that retaining, uh, that safety guard to rotate again. Brilliant! Right, next job. So what I've actually done with that cut is I've set the table saw over to 20 degrees and if we can focus on this section here you'll see that what I'm going to do is put another 20 degree angle on the base plate for the table saw 
that should allow them both to interlock in between each other so when we're running one past the other it can't lift out and go kind of off square if you're with me so I'm going to cut a similar um, kerf on another piece of MDF and that's going to be the base plate for the saw. Alright, take two. Nozzle was blocked up on the glue. So I've cut a line across, marked a line across here. We've flipped over the guide piece and uh, I'm going to apply some glue to it and I've also cut a sled which is 600mm long and screwed it to the base plate here. No screws are showing through on the bottom so it's smooth. We've got the opposite angle on this edge here as well and I've cut it 600mm so it's oversized so from the centre of the blade it runs 300mm or so um, past the centre of the blade to allow us to have a little bit of overhang in order to keep it all straight when we're cutting. I'm not going to apply too much glue to this because I don't want to run into the uh, problem of it oozing out on the good side, if you know what I mean, on my angle. So I don't want too much squeeze out on here. If there's any squeeze out, I'd prefer it to be on the back of the piece. Not so much the front, but we will try and get a good adhesion. It's already a bit oozing out of the back side there. That's not a problem. Let's make sure this is nicely spread. And then I've got my uh, staple gun or brad nailer, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I've got some 20 millimeter staples in there, and that that should be the right size for the MDF. Of course, being 18 mil thick originally, and then this six mil section on the top. So yeah, we've got that lined up there perfectly. We did get a little bit of glue on the board here, that's not a problem. And then we'll line this up. So as I say, I drew a pencil line down the back. So all I need to do now is line up on that line perfectly. And bosh, one in. And come down, find the line. Two, find the line. Three, making sure of course that the brads are all the way in because I don't want to be hitting it with the saw at all. I shouldn't do but you never know if, if I've got full plunge on, full plunge, there's a possibility that I could just clip one of these brads if they're sticking out but they'd have to be sticking out a lot. We have a winner ladies and gentlemen. That is lovely. So let's just pop the saw on the side. Yep, we will have a bit of depth. I've left the guard on so the guard overhangs of course. Oh yeah. That's a good action and you'll see what I mean just on this end with that overhang just there so we can see that there I will have finished cutting the board but we're still engaged well past the saw to make sure that we get a straight cut right up to the edge of the board every time because sometimes when you're cutting freehand you can kind of zip off or out 
of course putting a funny edge on there. So I haven't cut this perfectly, so all that's left to do is plunge the saw to the right depth and then we'll run this edge off and it'll be a case of when we come to do a cut on a piece of plywood or MDF at eight foot long, we just line up this edge here with our pencil mark that we want to cut, clamp the whole thing on with a couple of quick clamps like this, provided that they're out of the way. As you can see, they pass that quite easily because I made that deep enough. And then you'll be able to just cut her off. So uh, let's just finish this cut here. And uh, then I think all will be ready for the first run. Well, that's that finally cut and we've been, we've also got vacked up as well. So what I've done is obviously nailed the board on, as you can see, with the angle and then I've run the whole thing through the table saw this side and then this side I cut with the actual circular saw itself. So, if I bring you just over here, just like this, and we focus down a little bit on the actual rail itself, or track, just there you can see where the two angles come together to meet up. And once that's in there, then this has to basically move away to come off. So all together I'm hoping that the whole system slides up and down the track and with the width of this base plate here that should provide or take out any undulations that are actually in the board or the guide therefore giving us a straight perfect line every time I hope, and the way I've fixed this base plate on is just with a few little screws. As you can see, they don't poke out the bottom. I have some just the right size, some little pan heads. And there we are. So this edge here, this is basically a zero clearance on the blade. So if I come round here, you'll see that the blade there, you can just hear it just kind of clips the back edge a touch. So as we're running forwards like that, we'll get a perfect cut all the way down. And the edge of that blade, of course, is referenced to this edge along here. So all we need to do when we cut something, if we're gonna cut, the workpiece will be this side. We'll reference this line up to the edge. So if it's 200 mil to there, and we cut that piece that we cut off should be exactly 200 mil. So that was a project, or well that is a project that has taken me all day to get finished because at around two o'clock today, um, we had a brief meeting with our new head chef, Tom, and uh, well, we just got chatting about the kitchen and got very excited. And yeah, he came in at two, it's now six o'clock, so we spent four hours talking about our plans for the kitchen, well, mainly his plans for the kitchen and how I can help him uh, see them through to fruition. It's gonna be really good, but that means that the day's gone and I've got one project finished, which isn't normally a bad thing. Look at the hair. But what I want to do now is, uh, well, get packed up, go home, and then um, I've got all these measurements and what have you for the kitchen now that I want to build yet another model so we can see if all of the kitchen equipment will fit in. We've got stuff to buy. Anyway, as you can probably tell, I'm exhausted. So I'm going to go home and uh, I'll do a little bit more work. Would you believe it? Sucker for punishment. 
Anyway, cheers for tuning in, and yeah, we will see you on the next one. Cheers. <laughs>